Hey everyone, this is Peter. And Lori. With Prophetic Watchman 88. It's Thursday, Lori. And what does that mean? It means video. Video. Give me kisses. Mwah. Hello everybody out there in TV land. How are you? TV land. I know, I'm old. Yeah. <laughs> We're like Gen Xers. Nice shirt, babe. Okay, look at this. Look at this, everyone. Okay. NASCAR was established in 1948. <laughs> Now, we all know that 1948 was uh, when Israel became a nation once again for the last time before we go in. I got to tell you something. My son, Micah. Our son, Micah. Right. He's mine, too. He's yours, too. For, for his birthday and for Father's Day, last weekend, he took me out to my very first NASCAR race. Oh my goodness gracious sakes. Now listen, I know I'm, I've never been a fan. I didn't even really think it's a real sport. All those things that, you know, non NASCAR fans think. So he took me to this place and I went. The most unbelievable loud noise I've ever heard. Constant for, what is it, three hours? Constant. Wow. Those cars. I mean, just. <laughs> oh, and when they take off, your whole heart goes, and then you're vibrating the whole time. And we had the earphones, and even with earphones and all that, you could still hear everything. And then we heard them talking in the car. <sighs> was a great experience. It was one of the best days <laughs> of my life. Yeah. It, we, me and Micah had a phenomenal time. Right, right. It was, uh, he just blessed me with doing that. And so we just spent the whole day together. We went down there, where is it, Sonoma? Sonoma uh -huh. Raceway Sonoma Race in California. Again, he just surprised me. Well, he said, hey, let's do it, and we did it. Yeah. And so anyway, thank you, Micah, if you're ever listening to this. <laughs> but, Lori, mm -hmm. I know you and your family have been NASCAR fans your whole life. In fact, my Yeah, we have a lot of race, a couple of racers. You do? That were in. Not, not in NASCAR, well, but in the racing circuit. There you go. Yes, there. and this is kind of like, well, I say before NASCAR, but... You know, the the racers in my family were more localized. Right, right, right. But they did get to race with, like, Richard Petty. Yes. And stuff like that. Ted, was it Ted Fritz? Yeah. He, you're, you know, he, uncle. He, your uncle raced against Richard Petty and all those racer guys. And then your dad, a phenomenal racer, but didn't have the... The sponsorship, sponsorship so right. to have, like, a great car like they all had. So he, he, him and his friend worked on their car. And so if you don't know anything about NASCAR... Every little bump and dink and slam into the wall, you have to fix everything, right? On, a, on your own dime. Right, on your own dime because you don't have sponsorship. Right, right. But, but Jimmy Joe Bob was a phenomenal yeah. racer. And so anyway, I just, and so I got this shirt. You might see my arm disappear sometimes because it looks like the green screen, but I couldn't pass this up. And while I was there, I found out that there was um, uh, a gentleman from Mexico named Daniel Suarez. And so now I, I will root for this man because... <laughs> It was, he did a great job that day. We were watching Kyle Busch. That's Micah's fan. Uh, he's a fan of, Micah is a fan of Kyle Busch. So we were watching all that. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's funny because, um, like, uh, when I met Pete, and it, it was strictly <laughs> football, Raiders, and only would he wear black and gray or silver. Silver and black. And, um, or the scars are high school colors because he had to wear uniforms. And those were the only, that was it. That was I it. wore a Dodger and, hat. And for him to go and pick out this tie-dye shirt. Right. And, right. Uh, yeah, Michael was like, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the seven colors of God's rainbow. Right, right. This actually has the seven colors of right. God's rainbow. Plus it had the 48 on there. And it had 48. 48. Right, and when I saw 1948, I'm sorry, but sometimes I lose it when I see clues from God. Yeah. And to me, that was a hey. You might want to look into this. And so I did. And so I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I, I had such a great time. Mm -hmm. And and now, yeah, I can watch with my son and I can watch as a kind of a fan of NASCAR because I experienced it. Right. And you, you said that they had a, a air show, too. Oh, yes. Before the race started. I mean, we, Laura, uh, Mike and I got there early, early, right when the gates opened. So we were there from like, uh, I don't know, 730, 8 o'clock. And so we saw all the festivities. We saw all the carnival-like experience all the food, but the air show was phenomenal. It was amazing. And they did a, a, um, um, a tribute to all the, um, the, the veterans, past and present, the ones currently that are in and all that. And, the, and they, they made this giant heart in the sky. And then one went through it. And Mike and I, we dedicated that to your dad. Just, we made a toast to your dad because he's a veteran from Vietnam and all that stuff. He, he fought 
And he loves NASCAR. And he is a huge NASCAR <laughs> fan. So we just gave a toast to Papa Jim because uh, we wanted to honor him in that. And yeah. and I got to admit, I got teary eyed. Uh -oh. I, I I really got teary eyed during that performance and and that the way they they honored God, yeah. Jesus Christ. They proclaimed him there. Uh, yes, I was handing out. I handed out a, f a couple of these, a few of these, to some people that we met that God led us to. In fact, side story, I had to go to the bathroom. So I'm in the bathroom, and I'm like, huh, how could I, ma oh, I, go, I know what. I will leave one of these for good reading in case somebody has to go after me. I put it on a paper towel, I put it on the dispenser right there, <laughs> so the next person can have it. Anyway, I tell you, you can witness in any way that God shows right, you. Right, right, right. Yeah, we but, did go to the library that one day. Oh, and we, we did. Put, we put, uh, we found a Satanist book, and we put a track <laughs> inside the book we, in the library. I put a track next to the book on this side of the book. So there, there's, there's, <laughs> there's, yeah, there's. Anyway, we're goofy like that. We wanted to minister. Whoo! What else is going on? It's uh, just a lot. Yeah. Can I say that we came? That God brought brought us through a lot of. A lot of things. Yeah. Good, bad, and ugly. I'm just saying. And by bringing us through those things, he is energizing us. He is pouring his joy upon us. And we're going to learn some more about that today. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yeah. And the only way that we can make it. Go ahead. Yeah. It's been um, a strange week. Like, you know, like last week we told you guys we're fresh off the war path. Oh, but, right, right. Um, <laughs> you know, I felt like this week was more of a, a rest. Oh, yeah. Um, let's, you know see what God really wants to talk about with you guys. Right. And like that was kind of like a little bit of a struggle this week to get, what do you want to talk about God? You know, I, and but, I'm one, I'm, but yeah, he did. He did. And I'm wondering because you said that, because I know we need rest. I'm just saying yeah. um, this week for me has flown by. I, I literally go, Oh my gosh, tomorrow's Thursday, <laughs> you know, and, and every day, you know, we were, we've been seeking God and it's been quiet as far as, I want you to share this. I want you to share that. You know, when we get an impression, we get a feeling what God's doing. Um, and I maybe it's because he just wanted us to, to relax and rest. Yeah. And then I, and in, my, in my spirit, I knew that God had something for Thursday. I just had no idea what it was. Right. Have no idea. And so I, I got to say last night to this morning, God downloaded this and said, share this, this, and this. And you'll see some multiple scriptures that we're going to go over. And there's a flow to it. And believe it or not, uh, we, we are going to be discussing the timing of Shavuot. Uh, and, but we're not, that's not the only thing. So, and the yeah. importance of that day. Mm -hmm. And what happened on that day. Yeah. And what could happen on that day again. Right? right. <laughs> oh, please, Lord, oh, please. please. Let's go. Let it be. And we got <laughs> baby Billy. He's just saying hi to everybody. Bill Bailey, haven't heard from you in a while, but God bless you. We love you. And uh, Watchman Dan, can I just say, I don't know what Watchman Dan's going through, but over in the UK, they really seem to be clamping down even more than they are in the United States because they're doing other things that are trying to bring the end of the world over there. And it affects every single Christian, okay, that's over there. Yeah. So Watchman Dan, we love you and we're, we're praying, praying for, for you. you. Yes, yeah. we're praying for you. Stay encouraged. Stay, um, just, you're an amazing man. You know what to do. You know what to do. God has you and you're taken care of, you and your tribe, yeah. right? And Watchman Adam, I saw him uh, do a short, uh, really quick on, on uh, just an update, you know, continue to pray for Watchman Adam, for his back and everything they're going through and all that. Uh, all of you guys, I mean, I, I, I can't name you by name, but we just yeah. continue to pray for all the believers. Yeah, I'll tell you what, the, the worldwide beast is trying to shut us all down oh, wow. and, you know, we're... we're <laughs> Inch it along. We got this. We're fighting our way through. We got it. Right. Was it yesterday that we said, I think it was yesterday we were talking, and we had a, we had a, a God moment, me and her, and I started tearing up because we were talking about, you know, uh, uh, finishing strong and all that, and I said, we, if we have to drag one another over the finish line, we will finish strong in Christ because God has us. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So we were able to get some rest this week. We were able to shut down a little bit. And, and, and just do some other things. We're still taking care of everybody that we're taking care of. Mostly veg. <laughs> and eat. <laughs> veg and eat. Are we eating veggies? I don't know. Put in the comments. Are you eating your veggies? Yeah. I know one of my sons hates veggies. He thinks that the veggies are out to get us. <laughs> <laughs> I had to say that because it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not going to tell you which son it was, but it wasn't Micah. So, um, 
So I wanted to read what's on my cup. Read what's on your cup. How cool is it that the same God that created oceans and mountains and galaxies looked at you and thought the world needed one of you too? Yes. And that means you. That's right. That means you. Cheers. Yes. Cheers to each and every one of you guys that are in Christ. You are amazing. Okay. Yay, God. (laughs) Yay, God. What's that guy that he said? Uh, anyway, that singer. I forgot. <laughs> anyway, he's an old singer. He sings about mountains in Kentucky and all that stuff. And the John Denver. John Denver. He said, "Yay God!" Yay, I went, God. Yeah, yay God! I don't know why I went there, but I did. <laughs> anyway, I do want to say just a little bit about uh, the journey that we're all on. Mm-hmm. Okay. For a second, just take the the end of the world, the rapture part, just take it out for just a second. Just living in Christ, for Christ, to Christ. I'm yours, you're mine. It is tough. Right here, we walk by faith, not by sight. Our sight, we see everything. Our senses are alive and well, and we see and feel and hear everything, right? But God says, even though it looks like maybe dark or this or that, we walk by faith and we speak the word of God into situations, into our life, into others' lives. And, and, and that is difficult, but it is a moment by moment process Mm -hmm. that we're all going through and we're going to make it. Now you add back in there, the end of the world, the rapture come, what? Now you're like, oh, oh, I see. And the joy of the Lord is my strength that I can get through everything. And Paul talks, the apostle Paul talks at, length on the walking out the process and 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 looking for the appearing of jesus christ and his return and how to be ready and prepared in our world right now that we're living it is just over the top right Mm -hmm. two twinkies in a ding dong world and the world's getting ding dong air every moment every moment every moment and in fact watchman uh (laughs) watchman tom watchman for that what is it river watchman river that tom the dude our brother (laughs) he did a great video i think it was today on just going over all the craziness that is going on right now and our lovely brother Shoto we still owe you a call I'm gonna send you an email I, believe me I will and we're gonna combine um, ourselves with Christ it'll be fun anyway he did um, some a uh, really quick on just the craziness of life and at, at this the end times this is it this, this is what we have been waiting for reading right, about right it is mm-hmm. upon us right the things that the enemy is doing is so out so ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Sometimes you just have to be like, are people falling for this? This is <laughs> no, nuts. No, 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 no. We don't fall for it. No. This is where we throw our heads back and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> From a movie. Guess what it is? I'm not going to tell you. Okay. Anyway, but all of those things just continue to confirm that yes, mathematically, we are exactly where God says we are in the Word of God. This is the end times. This is the end where trials, tribulations, birth pains, right before Jacob's trouble, so the raptures are right upon us. This is it, is all I can say. Right, right. And because it's it, the enemy knows right. this is it. And he's going nutso. He, because, yeah, he, you know, remember, Satan hates God and Satan hates us hates us Mm -hmm. but God says you will conquer you'll be more than conquerors you'll be overcomers in this time right right? Mm -hmm. and and oh just and then remember what a what an overcomer is two heavyweight boxers going at it for 15 rounds knocking the tar out of each other and then whoa the champion boom hits the enemy and bam he's down and he's bleeding and bloody because he went through hell and back and they give him his reward and he's bloody and he's still alive and then he hands it over to his bride he gives that reward to his bride he went through everything that we may receive it right so that's what a conqueror more than a conqueror an overcomer is jesus christ overcame all for us who believe Mm -hmm. and we're going to be talking a lot about faith i think today because it it shows up in different places and everything is about faith without faith you can't please god right right and so he gives us the faith that we need to please him yes right right yeah Yeah. and so uh i just had to say that because it's been one of those times and and we're rejoicing in it we're resting in him and we're just gonna can we sit back and just enjoy the view (laughs) 
as we go, as we go with him on our way. Oh, this is the way. This is the way. <laughs> you guys need to know where that's from. <laughs> it's from the Bible originally, but it's also the Mandalorian. I got to say, <laughs> listen, I'm so, I don't know why I'm babbling like this, but... I started watching Mandalorian again. I didn't even know there was a season three. After after Luke came and rescued Baby Yoda and all that, and I, I was teary-eyed and all those things on season two, <laughs> I thought that was it. I thought it was over. So I just happened to be scanning some channels, and I saw uh, Mandalorian. Uh, uh, I go, you know, I'm going to watch it again. I'll watch it again. So I hit play, and it started on, on, on season three. And I'm like, I have no recollection. I have no memory of this episode. And I thought, oh, my gosh, this is a brand new <laughs> season. So I watched it all again. And all I want to say is the tribalness of the Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. The tribe mm -hmm. takes care of the tribe. It definitely has a prophetic picture. It has an extreme prophetic picture. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. They, they are always like being of the way. Of the way. And they come to consensus with one another. They look yeah. out for one another. They encourage one another. Man, that really sounds like the Bible. Yes, it sounds like all of us in Christ who are part of the global ecclesia, we are in Christ. Oh yes, we are washed thoroughly in his blood, inside and out. He has separated us from all sin. He has placed his righteousness, his righteousness in us and upon us. He has filled us and sealed us with his Holy Spirit yes. and he has marked us ready for pickup. That's right. That's right. That's right. And that's where we are. We are occupying with him until we go. So. As he moves, because he's the head, mm -hmm. where he goes, we go, what he does, we do, what he says, we say. <laughs> that's the way it is, and that's the way it always will be. <laughs> when you said that, ready for pickup, it yeah. reminded me of, uh, um, I don't know why, I went to the airport, and the baggage claim. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying I'm some kind of bag? <laughs> well, why not? <laughs> anyway, we're just a little bit silly. We're a little bit silly. That's an understatement. No, I'm kidding. We watched um, uh, oh, yeah. Acts. Um, it, it's funny because like uh, in the 90s, they made a Matthew movie, which was groundbreaking because, hello, it, they made him a happy Jesus. Right, right. I thought right, that right. was really cool. Back in the 90s. And it, it, sort, it, was of, great. it sort of opened the door like, oh, you mean God's nice. I don't know why I looked at him as a, you know, after reading the Bible and stuff. You know. A stern, serious, father, right? Father, yes. Right. And, you know, of course, we have the movies of the 70s of Jesus. Where they make him look untouchable. Uh, solemn. Yeah. Anyway, so this was groundbreaking. But anyway, they made also, they made the Book of Acts. They yes. They renamed it and everything, but it's the same movie. And, and it's free right now. And I was thinking, Paul, basically, he just told his story. <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah. like, and people were like... <laughs> This Jesus rose from the what? He rose from the right. grave. I mean, he's just telling the resurrection. He's telling the story about Jesus, but it's very relatable. Right. Right. The way right. they like, did it. Like I was thinking, well, anybody can preach if they just tell their story of how Jesus did came it. into their lives. Right. You know. I don't know why I I find it complicated to witness to people. It, I, in person. <laughs> right. Can, can I tell you why? I, I'm, I very, think? I'm very. I'm um, very. Uh, Go ahead. What? Why? I, I, well, I think because we want to do it perfectly and right. And so we're like, oh, I can't remember everything. I can't. But right. that's not what it's about. Mm -hmm. You know what God has done for you. Right. You're just sharing your testimony. So you're evangelizing. You are proclaiming mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. That's what we do. And that's what preaching is. Mm -hmm. and, and that movie actually helps us understand. Paul was just declaring the scriptures. Right, right. He was declaring Jesus and what he did. Because remember, when Paul was doing that, he hadn't, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John wasn't written yet. So he right. wasn't preaching their scriptures. He was preaching the scripture. He was preaching right. Jesus Christ. And then revelations that God would show him, like he right. would have visions and things like that. And um, and it's like, uh, it's 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 interesting because I feel like the beginning of the ministry is similar to the end of the ministry. Oh. So like. Um, wow. because we are in a low, we're alone where it's like a new territory of mm. moving in faith, like, oh. like living by faith before we just kind of went along with everybody and really not realizing that we were still right. not completely. Well, we, we weren't, uh, we didn't know what we didn't know. Right. Right. So when God took us and then we're talking, you know, over 33 years, right. 35 years, whatever, of, of God doing step by step. 
So some people read the book Acts and they think, oh, all of it's got to happen right now. But that was a process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember, we talked, we've talked on and off again about the process of each one of them, like Peter and Paul and Mark and all. They, you know, they, they had issues with one another. They worked out their issues mm -hmm. and they, then they continued to minister with one another. And so right. all those things are, are important. So just giving your testimony, yes. Yeah. So anyway. No, no, it's great. It's fantastic. <laughs> it was just interesting to see how neat it was that a lot of them got to travel together and be around each other. And, you know, like I, I was so envious of them mm. in the upper room, of, oh. you know, and just things like that. And I feel like we're so isolated yeah. where we are yeah. because of our faith. I give it to you. You know, yeah. I mean, we we don't have the means to 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 travel yeah. right now. We don't have the, and I, I'm just talking about you know because we're busy, right? Doing what well, the Lord yeah. has called us to we, do. This is where right. we are. Right. It's just a a little bit of a lonely journey, you know. Except that there are like-minded people, and we thank God for you guys. Yes. All over the world, yes. God has All you guys. All over the world, that's right. so cool. Right, and when you do make comments and you put things in there or you send emails and all that of encouragement, and uh, it makes us feel connected to yes. the global ecclesia. We are an ecclesia right here, Christ-centered. He is our focal point, preeminent, right? right? This is the ecclesia. And then we're connected with the global ecclesia. So when we're able to do things like this and you guys can communicate and all that, it makes us feel connected. I mean, right. I think I was just telling you, I, I, I would love to go be with some of you guys, like, like visit and, and just spend time with God and just uh, celebrating with you guys, right? I mean, to me, that is awesome. Yes, we're going to be doing that in heaven for eternity. It's going to be amazing. While we're here on earth, sometimes it's good to connect with the one another's yeah. and just encourage and right. be a blessing to one another. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why, I, like, when, um, when he went to the, the NASCAR, it was on Sunday, and I had to go to a baby shower. It it was like kind of um, like we both prayed just because we needed a really good day. We both prayed that we would both have really good days. Right. And I'm so glad. If you could see when he came home, he was just talking for hours about <laughs> how much fun it was. And I loved it. I was so happy for oh him. My we gosh. both had good days. And yeah. So it was just refreshing it was refreshing and can i yeah oh, can we give a shout out to our granddaughter yeah go ahead our granddaughter leah it's her birthday today her she's birthday eight today. eight beautiful number new beginnings yeah. she's ready to go yeah <laughs> and uh, um an answer to prayer we get to spend time with her and we're so excited she's going to be here tomorrow night and spend the night and we're just going to have a lovely time i miss her and our grandchildren so much and we're, we're rejoicing. <laughs> yes, I'm teary-eyed. We're rejoicing because they matter to us. So Those much. kids, oh my gosh, they matter to us. And so I'm celebrating right now knowing that I'll get to see her tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> if we're still here. But you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so anything else to see? Say? See. See or say, I mean, this is our opening time frame. Like I yeah. said, we, the reason we do this, guys, and I know that those of you that have subscribed and you've here, been here for a while, you know we do this because we like to show you and engage life with you. And if we can share with you what we've been going through and, and all the things that God has done in those times, that whole process, then, then you can learn from that and you can um, at least know what we're doing with Christ. And, oh, I didn't know you could do that. Or, hey, I could do that. Or, hey, I do that too. And, you know, all those things. And so that's why we share like this. Just not to, to we're not, it's not all about Petey and Lori. It's, this is our journey. We are of the way. This is the way. Amen. <laughs> this is the way. Amen. 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 So, um, uh, I was going to share something else and it bounced right out of my head. So, <laughs> it did. I, I don't remember. We'll but get to it. It'll, it'll, it'll come, come back. Yeah, it'll come back. So. <clears throat> His head's a little loopy, so it'll loop around. <laughs> I love how you say that. She calls me loopy. And she says, I, in public or in private, she, she, she knows how to really talk to me in, in words of uh, encouragement and endearing things. I'm a loopy guy. Okay. <laughs> See what I mean? I'm loopy. Okay. Now, I have to say this before we move on. Oh. Okay. So, not making a big deal, but if the Holy Spirit puts upon your heart to donate to this ministry, right here are a few ways that you can donate to this ministry. Just so you know, Almighty God takes care of us every step of the way. And it has been beautiful. It is a true faith walk. I mean, okay, I, I, can I just share like that? Okay. Every time I think I know what I'm supposed to do as far as finances or this or that, 
when I do go that direction, when it's, uh, I, I got to put it like this, um, if job opportunities or this or that, and I, and I go to it, and then the door shuts, I'm not, now, now I am not uh, panicking or going, oh no, what do we do now? I just go, okay, God, you close that door. I know you're going to make, a, you're going to open another door. And he does. And he does when we do it in faith. Okay. Now I do remember what I was going to say, so I got to say it now. Can I? Okay. Last video, <clears throat> it was, it was a teaching time. We had a lot of scripture and we went, it was a beautiful, I thought it was amazing. I thought it was great and encouraging. There was a lot of scripture and it was a lot talking about how to live right now in the end times, where we are right now. A couple people um, <clears throat> misunderstood maybe a little bit of it. And, and if there was a one or two, there might've been more. So, <clears throat> In no way were we saying that once we are in Christ, you can lose your salvation or, you know, we did a bad thing and so he kicks us out. That is not what we were saying. We were saying it is a complete journey and process. When we come into Christ, we receive him by faith, his grace through faith. It's not of our works or anything we can do or not do. It is his unmerited favor, his right, free gift, right. and we receive it. Once you do that and you're in, bam, you are one with him. He puts his DNA, his DNA, that excites me. First John 3, 9, his DNA is in us. No one takes it out, right? And with all that are of him and in his hand and he, Jesus Christ is in the Father, nobody can take us out. Okay, that being said, you might have misunderstood something that we were saying. Okay, we are saved, completely saved, delivered and healed. We're going to heaven. Our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, right? The blood has covered us. We're in grace. Now that we're saved, we are on a journey. We walk out our salvation. There you go. Go. Mm -hmm. You want to say something? Yeah. And go ahead. like, here's here's the thing that I feel like the Lord. We we just because we got saved doesn't mean there's things that need to be dealt with. You know. That doesn't mean right. 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 Like like you know, bad you habits that there we picked up. That, things like that. So I'm just saying that like. The Lord is so sweet and gentle, yes. and He brings it up, and He's like, "Hey, let's deal with this now." Right. Or I'm I'm getting you ready. I'm right. getting you ready for the rapture. I'm right. getting you ready for my kingdom. Right. Let's deal with this. Let's walk this out. Let's right. do this. Right. And um, the Holy Spirit is so. What we've learned on our faith journey is that the Holy Spirit is so faithful. Oh yeah. To push us and per and and pursue us at right. the same time yeah. to walk out our salvation right. we are walking out our salvation until we are complete yes. in the kingdom right when he comes and appears the last part will be transformed yes. right which are bodies yes. so spirit soul and body our soul mind will and emotions our desires our heart okay mm -hmm. Believe it or not, that needs to be um, adjusted and put in line and aligned with Almighty God. That's right. That's all, that's all we're saying. And it, He keeps our eyes focused on Him. Yeah. It's not a salvational issue. It's a deliverance. It's a setting free. Now, if, if somebody gets saved and for the next 70 years they live uh, like that and they, they, they stay like that or whatever, they're still saved. I'm not saying they're not saved. They believe in Jesus Christ. But have you ever heard the scriptures where we're going from level to level or promotion to promotion or layer glory to layer to glory glory, uh, yeah, glory to glory faith to faith all of that it is a continual journey yeah and it is exciting and and you get freer and freer and you can experience the freedom of god right here on earth before we go so that's what i was saying that's what we were saying it's, it wasn't a salvational issue it's Here's how we walk it out, and here's how we live in the end times. That's all. Because all of us make mistakes. We all mess up. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's why Jesus Christ did what he did. He is the sacrifice. He did it. He put on the line, the finished work on the cross. His death, burial, resurrection in three days, resurrected, ascended, and re he's returning. All of that, it's, 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 it's all of it, right? Okay, it's, and it's a journey. It's a journey. Yeah. I just wanted to say that so there's no misunderstanding because I got a, a, a you know, somebody kind of scolded me. And I'm like, I don't think you listened to what we were saying. So anyway, just wanted to be clear. That's all. Okay. I noticed this time on this video, we are doing a lot of talking this way. You know why? Because we're the only ones here. <laughs> <laughs> if you were here, we'd look at you. Anyway. Oh, I can't wait to meet it's you guys. Silly. I am silly. I'm excited. But let's move on. Okay. okay listen to this. <clears throat> now. We asked you guys, we made a backup channel. The reason for the backup channel, in case they take this one down again, 
we have somewhere for you guys to still see some of our videos. We are, we were at this time, we were at 111 subscribers. Right now, I think we're at 131 subscribers. We really can't do any um, uh, uh, sharing on the uh, uh, community pages or short videos or anything like that until we get these, I think it's 500 or 1,000 subscribers. We have 26,000 right now on our main channel. And it's going down quickly. I've, I've watched it. It's, it's like going down. It's so exciting. Um, but for all of you guys that are our actual subscribers and you and you want to hear more of what we do, please go to this backup channel right here, Prophetic Watchman 88-Backup. Very simple. You can go to our main page, click on the link that's right there. It looks just like that. And bamo, subscribe and move on. There's just I, I just want to say that because we will say something that offends the beast system. We just are because we're preaching the word of God. And the word of God right now offends the beast system. The That's world, right. anyone in the world, it is offending them. Yeah, and right. they're clamping down on everybody. Oh yeah, a lot harder. Big everywhere. time. Everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. Okay. So, so eventually, you know, we may not. I mean, you know, I don't know. What? Eventually, people won't be able. But praise God, the Holy Spirit is still here. Yes. <laughs> so we can get through. <laughs> yes. You're fine. 10 for a good buddy. Oh, 10 for a good buddy. Okay, there you go. So, um, I know I'm being silly. I want you to be silly. Here we go. Oh. So that's why I was like, I was laughing when you were talking about it. So, on the left, this right here is the, it's called the, the, the visual Bible. The first one was the Matthew, the book of Matthew. That was the first one we were talking yes, about. And they go verse by verse. They literally verse by verse through the whole and that's why i think it's just so cool so amazing so we watched this one last night uh the the acts the acts of the apostles and i think the new name is uh, the apostles after jesus they changed the name but either way it's the book of acts mm -hmm. and the same thing they go through um uh what's that guy's name that's in there is it dean jones uh -huh. dean jones isn't that uh, herbie the love bug <laughs> yeah <laughs> you got some younger ones are going what is that <laughs> Anyway, he's in this, and so the way they do it is just joyful. It was just so, it was so refreshing and cool, right? Yeah. And you get to hear the whole book of Acts right there. And and revelations were flying off the page at me last night. I was like going crazy. So, anyway, when what, you get a chance, go see it. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's um, interesting. What was really kind of crazy is the, um, the other day the Lord showed me, you know, because... Um, I got saved in 1984. That's right. In November. So November, I will be 40 years old. <laughs> she's only 40 years old, ladies and gentlemen. I'm 39. Yeah, she's 39, 39 years old right now. So, and I, I told Pete, because I died that day. <laughs> yes. And I was reborn, so now my birthday yes. is 39. Yeah, but you have a new birthday. <laughs> and I'm a little younger. Um, <laughs> she was saved first. She brought me in. Anywho, well, I don't know where I was doing. <laughs> You came in 88, so it was oh, like four no, 89, years. 89. 89. Eight, five, five years. years. Grace, later. thank you, God. Okay, so in 1984, just to reverse, of so 48. So it still is a prophetic picture there. I'm just saying, a prophetic picture there. Okay, I'm not going to get crazy with numbers, guys, but there's a lot of great numbers. So I think we can start. You ready? Yeah. Okay, now we're talking about the timing of Shavuot. And we're also talking about something that very important that happened. Now, this is just a picture of a movie that where Jesus Christ is taken up. He's ascent. So he's already, um, he, he blessed his uh, disciples and he is being taken up before them. All the men of men of, of Galilee. And they're looking at him intently right here. And on this movie, it's really cool because it shows the angels in the cloud. And it shows how Jesus Christ is taken up. Mm -hmm. And it's very important because I know we call it the Ascension Day. Because he did ascend, but we're going to learn something about that word and things like that and on how he went, okay? And how, how why it's important. Um, and when did this day happen? And we have the calendar. We're going to go over all that, but that's what we're doing. So okay. we're going to we're going to go over some scriptures, and they're we're going to bounce around the Bible, okay. but the scriptures are going to flow. And we're all going to learn together. Holy Spirit, please help us all learn together right now. Yes. Woo! Yes, I'm, I'm excited. Okay, I'm excited. Here we go. Let's get into this. So Romans chapter 1. All right, what does it say? Let me get my bouncy ball out. We are going to take our time and we're going to go over this. So now this is Romans. So this is Paul talking. Okay, now Paul says, oh, look at this. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Paul was not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And I know you guys are not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. She's not ashamed. Now, one thing Paul mentions about, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That means we announce it. Mm -hmm. So many times in my past, uh, I, I, even years ago, <clears throat> even currently, sometimes when God says to do something or say, like I'll get an impression or a feeling or a sense or he'll show me something, right? Mm -hmm. 
And sometimes I get nervous. Not that I'm ashamed, but I'm like, mm. and all of a sudden my hu humanity, my humanness goes, nah, I don't think you should share that. Uh, they're going to think this of you. They're going to think that of you. That right there is being ashamed. I'm just saying that, just blatant it out. Paul says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, this is not condemning anybody. We can work through those issues. We, if, if we feel shame or ashamed, God will work through those issues. Absolutely, he can do it. But So look at this. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power, dunamis, dunamis power. That right there is the... Dynamite. <laughs> yes, baby doll. <laughs> Dynamite power of God. It's the explosive, miraculous power of God. That's, that power does not come from us. It comes from God. Okay, so the gospel of Jesus Christ, it is the power of God unto salvation. Salvation to everyone that believeth. We're hitting pause right there. So, the gospel, as we know, is the power of God unto salvation. Salvation, deliverance, healing. It is taking us from one place to another. It is rescuing us. It is a great escape from where we were to where God wants us to be. Yeah, I'll even give you a prophetic picture, another prophetic picture of the great escape. The gospel, the power of God, is our great escape from this world system, from sin, death, hell, and the grave. Yeah. We're, we've escaped those things in Christ. Amen. Yes, yes. Now look at this. Everyone that believeth, that word right there is actually faith. So just like um, Abraham believed and it was counted to him as righteousness. Mm -hmm. Right? And we're going to get into all that stuff too. But, but so remember, Abraham believed God and he was counted righteous. Mm -hmm. We, it never changed. We believe God and it is counted to us as righteousness. Okay? Same thing. And so, um, uh, there's, right there, look at that. There's no works, there's no nothing. You believe and you are saved. Now, look at this. To the Jew first. What? Yes. Everything came to Israel, the Jew first. Everything God brought to them first. Now, when it comes to salvation, he gave it to them first. Overall picture of all of Israel, they rejected. Now, yes, they are Messianic Jews, right, right? Jews that believed, you know, all the, all the men of Galilee, all the disciples, the apostles, they were Jewish. They're Jews. They believed they had faith, right? Okay, to the Jew first. And also to the Greeks or the Gentiles, us, that we, we didn't qualify. We weren't a part. We, we, we were a different branch even. We had to be engrafted into the vine. He's the vine. We are the branches. He grafted us in so that we could receive the promise. Amen. Oh, Oh, I, I, I'm excited because it's the promise, the Holy Spirit, the promise of God, the oil of God, the seal of God. That's what we get. We get salvation and that's how it comes. Okay, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now, 17. For therein, where? For therein the gospel, in all what we just read, for therein is righteousness. The righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Pause for a second. We just talked about going from glory to glory, one level to another level, a, a, a promotion in the spirit from faith to faith. Okay, same word. Faith, we believe, we have faith, we are counted as righteous. And as we walk it out with God, Mm -hmm. Our faith builds. There you go. Oh, and we can build up our most holy faith. We learned in our last video, we went over that in Jude, right? Our most holy faith. So build up your faith. Do whatever God's saying to do. Uh, I don't care if it's quick or slow. Just, just go with him. And you will go from faith to faith. Amen. As it is written, the just or the righteous shall live by faith. It's all right there. Everything we've talked about even before the scripture, it, it actually is right here. Okay? These, all these things. And so, guys, we're also looking at a prophetic picture as we go through these, um, all the scripture. Because God's story, his eternal purpose, from the beginning to the end is the same. And he told us the end from the beginning. We know all these things, right? Come on, you guys know this. In Genesis 1-1, he tells the whole thing right there. Better sheet. Right there, the, big, the whole eternal purpose of God. Behold the hand, behold the nail. It is Jesus Christ in the very beginning. It's Jesus Christ in the very end. Why? He is the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. The Aleph and the Tav. And all the middle. And all the middle. <laughs> Billy, do you want some of that? <laughs> yes, you do. Billy Goat, he needs to get in. Okay, now. So that's Romans 1. I wanted to kick it off like that. We had to kick it off like that. And look, we have 16 in the Hebrew means love. And so we're talking about the gospel. The gospel is the love of God for God so loved the world. Okay. And once we have it, we have victory. 17 in Hebrew is victory. So I, I want to bring some of these things out. Love and victory. And this is how you get in. This is everything right here. I mean, really, 
This is crazy. I'm going to look at this for a second. Hmm. <laughs> you get it? Okay. Look at this massive word for is. Well, yeah, and I, I'm these sure are tied. It's more than and, is, right, but. and this tied to the righteousness is in the gospel. Revealed. <laughs> <laughs> Righteous of God revealed. I like how you say that. Okay. You good? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's Romans 1. Now, we are going to go to Exodus 20. See, like I said, we're bouncing around. So that was Greek. Now we're going to go to Hebrew. Now, Exodus, uh, Exodus 20. Guess what verse? 2024. <laughs> so this is Exodus 2024. Hint, hint. There's a prophetic picture. Pay attention. Okay, so whew, here we go. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me. And thou shalt sacrifice therein burnt offerings, the hidden aleph and tav. We just discussed the aleph and the tav is Jesus Christ. So, he is our sacrifice. Jesus Christ is our offering. He is our everything. And, and the hidden aleph and tav just shows us prophetic pictures, mm -hmm. hidden mysteries that God puts in there so that we can receive them right here where we are right now. Because it's a reminder. Even 10, 20, 30 years ago, I couldn't find, I didn't know this. Because I didn't have a Hebrew Bible. I didn't have this application where I can look at the, the scriptures in the Hebrew and see the hidden words that are in there, that God put in there, um, and, and, and know what they mean. So, now, in this time, all the books are open, like in Daniel, shut them, because, and then you're going to open them at the end of the time. It's just an open book, and we get to see Jesus Christ. Okay, so, he is our sacrifice, our offerings, and he is our peace offerings. And another hidden alpha top, the sheep. He went like a sheep to the slaughter. All of this speaks to Christ over and over and over. And thy sheep and thy oxen in thy places, I where I record my name. And there is his name, the Aleph and the Tav, Jesus Christ. So he records his name, okay? And look at this, what's he going to do? I will come unto thee and will bless thee. Mm -hmm. That happens here, and that happens what we're waiting for right now. He is coming. The hidden elephant Tov will appear. He will open his portal. He will appear and come through just like he says, and he will take us. Amen. He's coming to take us. <clears throat> okay, so Jesus Christ is all over this. And yes, there's all kinds of other stuff. I mean, we could even get to the, the numbers in here, but I don't want to do that yet. What I do want to do is, let's see the next thing that's hidden. We have a hidden elephant Tov where Jesus Christ right here in the, is right in the middle. So we have the sheep is the noon, sade, and the lamed is the peace offering. The sheep is the peace offering. It's Christ. We're in Christ. We want to get a, an idea of who we are. Because and, Christ is in the center yes, of the sheep. Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, yes. And He's so, the good shepherd. Yes, he is the good shepherd. In fact, there's the lamb right there. So he is definitely, you know what I'm saying? Because right. he's the shepherd. Okay. Now, in case you guys don't know, this noon, the character noon. He's going to shepherd okay. us into heaven. <gasps> okay. Let's that, do. Not the, Saul. Okay. Okay. Now look at this. Let's start with the, the, the we're going to start with the lamb. Okay. So the shepherd. Okay. Now this is Sade. The shepherd is going to grab us with the hook and hook us and take us to our new life. Noon is life. So the shepherd is... So every time we see not Saul, we can think the shepherd is going to take us, because that's a hook, and he's taking us. He's taking us as a harvest. If you look at that word, it's also harvest. Taking us as a harvest to life, to his new life, where we're going to be with him in the kingdom forevermore. Do you get it? Amen. Yes. Amen. So, again, that's why we want to say, if there's any hidden things in here, God, please reveal, because we want to see everything that you have for us. Is that okay? Yeah. Because there's so much here, but this should be very encouraging for anyone who is loving his appearing and waiting for his return. This right here will keep us going because he's going to appear any moment. Okay, so that's Exodus 20, 24. We are in the year 2024 where this not Saul is going to take place where Jesus Christ takes us home. I'm going to throw it out there because I want to, right? Yeah. 2024. So here we go. You ready? Okay, next. Now we're going to jump over to Psalm 16. Again, it's a love song. <laughs> it is. 16 yeah. is love. So now let's see what God has us in here. Okay, now. Thou wilt show. Oh, that, okay, look at this. Thou will show me, right to left and circular, thou will show me, or thou will make known to me. I will know, you will show me the path of life. Thou will make me known of the path of life. So I will know what that path is, and it leads to life, and it is life. Um, and then right here, and thy presence 
In thy presence is the fullness of joy. Now, this one's not hidden, but I highlighted it because it has the word in. In thy presence, in the presence of Jesus Christ, in the presence of Almighty God, is the fullness of joy. Anyone who is looking for joy right now, if you're in Christ, he is pouring it upon you. Receive it by faith, because in his presence is the fullness of joy. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. It's what continues to keep us going. We keep going on and on and on for however long it takes. We are in Him, filled with joy. It is bubbling out of us, over us, everywhere. We're sh you like to say we're sloshing? Sloshing. We're sloshing around. The because joy. Because we're so overwhelmed right. with the Holy Spirit. Yes, absolutely. And, and in thy right hand are thy pleasures forevermore. Pleasures forevermore. Just want to take a drink. Hold on. Whew. Now, again, I, I didn't go deep into the numbers, but there are really cool numbers here that we want to look at, but I'm not going to do that right now. For now, just get this. He makes his path of life known to us that are in him. And in his presence, Jesus Christ is the fullness of joy. And in his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So we are going to go see those pleasures forevermore. He pours them on here, but then we're going to go see them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're going to bounce over to uh, Psalm 58. Ah, Psalm 58. Let's see. what. Oh, this we're just reading this one. Here we go. So I'm going to get my bouncy ball out so we can read it. <clears throat> okay. Now, now we're going we're gonna to take our time on this one. Okay. Watch this. Psalm 58. Before your pope, before your pots can fill the thorns. Now, it, it's a, it gives a picture of a pot on the thorn, the fire, the fire that's burning, right? Okay, burning, you're making this hot. It's heating up. So let's just imagine we're in this pot. And it seems to be getting hotter and hotter and ding dong -ier and ding dong -ier every moment <laughs> out there, right? The world is getting crazier and crazier and crazier. So, it says, before your pots can fill the thorns, or the fire of the thorns, he shall take them away. What? As with a whirlwind. Now, whenever I see whirlwind, I think of uh, when, they, uh, when God came and got Elijah and, and with the chariots in a whirlwind. <laughs> A fire, fiery chariots, and a whirlwind, and took it. And this whirlwind word, it, it literally talks about this is the, the, the tempest, the storm, the, the whirlwind that is around God's presence. When God makes his presence, like think Mount Sinai, when God came down and the whole top of the mountain burnt, that was a tempest storm. Lightning was going off in the clouds, and the people were going, ah! They did this. And they say, Moses, we can't talk to him. You go talk to him, and you tell us what he says, because we're terrified. That whirlwind describes the presence of God. So, he will take them away in, the, in a whirlwind in his presence, both the living and in his wrath. Now, the 29-11 event, 29 departure, 11 Jacob's trouble, right? So, we're talking about a departure and the wrath of God, Jacob's trouble that will hit the earth. Again, we can read it and it's exactly perfect the way it is. And then we can also look into the prophetic message that God has here, and he's speaking to us right now. So please engage. Please try to get the Holy Spirit to have you, your, your eyes open. In fact, Holy Spirit, open everyone's eyes that we may see this the way you intended, God. We thank you. All right, here we go. Verse 10. All right. The righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance. Time out. Now, that's a very weird statement. We are righteous only because we are in Christ Jesus and he has cleansed us and washed us he, by grace through faith. Okay, we're made righteous because we believe. Okay, now we believe in him. So the righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance. Now, there's a lot of watchmen, us included, that will, we will describe to you crazy things that are happening in the world that are like horrible, horrible. And we're going, oh, look at this, look at this. And we look like we're almost joyful and excited. We're not joyful and excited that those things are happening and people are dying and earthquakes and famines and floods and uh, volcanoes and everything. And the month of June. And, well, and the month of June, right? You know, the flag. Okay, so all of those things, this says the righteous rejoice in the vengeance. When we see the vengeance, we rejoice because that vengeance is not meant for us. And that vengeance that we're seeing is a calling card that Christ is coming, so be ready. 
So yes, the righteous will rejoice. And even if, if the, a horrible thing takes any of us who are in Christ out and we pass away, we die, we gain. Because to die is gain. We, we, when we cross out of here, we are going to be in perfection. So it, we must rejoice, even in the, these things, right? Because there's World War Three, you know, everybody's boom, 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 the nukes and blah, blah, blah. And some watchmen are going, yeah, like Bobby, I love you, Bobby. <laughs> Bob Barber, uh, uh, In Time Visions, Dreams and Visions. He gets all giddy when he starts talking about the nukes and this and that. Not in a bad way, just that we know that Jesus Christ is coming. And these things must take place before he comes and as he comes. So the righteous rejoice when they see the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Now, that, you could take that a couple different ways. You know, when, when Jesus will come back, okay, I, I don't know how to put this. We go, Jacob's trouble starts, and all the wrath of God is going on, okay? When we go up to be with him, there's a, a point when, when Jesus Christ comes back. He goes, hide yourselves in your rooms for a little bit. I'll be right back. And he comes and does a lot of different things down here, okay? And then when we come back with him, you notice that his robes have blood on them. It describes that in Revelation. It, it, blood. And so he's going to be doing a lot of things and the blood will be upon him. And I'm assuming upon us as well. I just want to say that. Okay. I don't know how all that works, but I know that that's what this is talking about. Okay. And the blood will be there. Now, verse 11. Okay. So that a man, so that's a, a man, so that mankind shall say truly, verily, truly, there is a reward for the righteous. The righteous, they will say, okay, put it like this. When Jesus Christ appears, and the dead in Christ rise first, and we're transformed, us are alive and remain, and then we're caught up together, harpazoed, not sawed, to Jesus Christ, mankind that's left on the earth is going to go, uh oh <laughs> And they're going to say, there's definitely a reward for the righteous. Because we are taken out of the way before wrath can come. It is from the beginning to the end of the Bible. People go, where, where is that? It's everywhere. So we must be gone. And it says right here, okay, that's our reward. And truly, verily, he is Elohim, Elohim this word God, Elohim that judges the earth. So Almighty God will judge the earth. We know that. We've read the New Testament, right? It's in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And here's a prophetic picture, again, showing the event, the 2911 event. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I just had to get that out there. All right. We're flying through this. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, here we go. Next, next scripture. Now back to the New Testament. Acts chapter 20. I wonder what verse we're going to talk about. 20... 24. So here is Acts 20, 24. And yes, it, I was reminded when we were watching that video last night, uh, this is Paul talking. So Paul was talking at this time and it lights were, uh, flashes were going off in my head. I go, I need to go look into that. So here's what we got. So Paul's talking here and he says, but none of these, none of these things move me. So before that, he's talking about all negative things, all these negative, horrible things. None of those things move me. Paul says, I am solid. I am solid. Neither count I my life dear to myself. Now look but here, upper right, life. This word life right here, we mentioned on our other video, our videos where it says, um, if you try to save your life, you will lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you will save it. You will gain it. Now, this life is that life. It's um, G5590 is the psyche. It's the mind, will, emotions, our desires, right? It's, it's, it's that life. Remember, God's life, Zoe, is uh, G2222. His life manifests in our body. But our life, this life, is what we're talking about right here. So, neither count I my life dear to myself. And I don't care if I die, he's saying. If I die, I die. So that I might finish my course, finish my race with joy. We have scriptural backing that we can finish strong. Yes. That it, no matter how our physical bodies feel, it doesn't matter. We can finish this course strong, go over the finish line together, rejoicing and saying, yes, Jesus Christ, you did it. Yes. You did it all. Mm. Yeah. So yes, so finish the course with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord, of the Lord Jesus. Now, hold on one second. And the ministry, okay? This ministry, you, you just talked about the ministry that before when we were talking about ministry. <laughs> um, because here, here's what I'm saying. All of us in Christ, every single one of us in Christ has a ministry. 
You may, you may or may not know it or, or realize it or recognize it. But if you are in Christ and you are saved, you have a ministry. Part of that ministry is just opening your mouth and confessing Jesus Christ. Here's a very easy way. I, I, I'm a very easy, easy way to do it. Let's say you're out town somewhere, you're talking to somebody, whoever, whatever. And they go, hey, how you doing? You could easily say, well, things are going however they, you want to say. Things are going good, going bad, whatever. But I am in Jesus Christ, and so I will make it through everything. Just the statement that you just said, I am in Jesus Christ. They will either know or not know. They will be offended or rejoice with you. Mm -hmm. Or they might even go, what? What do you mean? That is the simplest way. Just by somebody saying, hey, hello, how you doing? Well, I don't know. Things are so-so, but I'm in Christ, and he has my life, and I'm going to make it, and he blesses me. And you can say whatever you want, whatever comes out, right? It's the Holy Spirit giving you the words. Mm -hmm. That is your ministry. That is your ministry. Some of you, you know you have prayer ministries, right? Uh, where you guys pray like, I mean, you call down the power of God. Those kind of ministries. Yes, you guys, all of you, no matter what it is, uh, if you think it's little or big or whatever, that is your ministry. However you are confessing and sharing Jesus Christ, that is your ministry. It might be bringing food to the homeless or to the poor, giving to the needy, whatever. Yeah. It's unlimited what that word right there, ministry, can be. Okay? Now remember, a minister is a servant. A servant of the Most High God. We are just servants. We're nobodies. We're Twinkies in a ding-dong world. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I was, um, you know, having a kind of a self-pity moment, you know. And we I'm, all do. I'm vacuuming around the house vigorously <laughs> because, you know, I would just love to, like, I mean, in a way, this is kind of like our time to, to be empty nesters. We really right, haven't right, had right. that. No. And, um, you know, I'm just like, some. sometimes I just want to get in the car and drive and never come back. <laughs> Hold on. No, I'm, I'm, ta I'm being I'm very fleshly. I was, I know I was in the flesh that day. It's okay. And I'm vacuuming vigorously. Like, Lord, I would just love to get in the car and just travel the United States and oh. just get out of here. I just want right. to get out of here. Not that it's great out there. But, no, no. But anyway. You know, just one of those. It's something things. that we like to do, actually. I got to go get ahead. out of here. All right. Anyway, um, so all of a sudden, I was like, I'm a slave for the Lord. I'm just, that's, uh, this, this life is about Him. Yes. Not about me. Right. Up there will be. All of us. <laughs> It'll be. About all of us. That's our reward. But, yeah. That's our that's reward. That's our reward. Yes. So just, you know, uh, stick with it. Yep. Yeah. Honey, we got this. Yeah. We got this. As you know, we are real, and we are raw, and we show you everything that we can that, that, that God allows us to show you. And so, it is not an easy walk. The faith walk that is described in the Bible is not an easy it's walk. It's a lonely walk. It's a lonely, difficult walk, unless you can find uh, the one another's where you are. I'm, I know some of you have great support systems. You have uh, local ecclesias, which is a church or the church, not the building, but the people. Okay. Local ecclesias that you can get together and all that stuff. We really don't have that here. Just, just saying I, we don't. Okay. That's why sometimes I feel, I literally feel like I want to go drive to South Carolina, go see Dr. Barry and, and Daniela. I want to see, I want to go out there and, and visit all of you guys. Uh, Lisa R. I want to go, you know, I, all, you and your husband and, and your tribe, all of you. I just, because it's a, it's a human connection point in Christ. Yeah. Can I put it like that? Yeah. And so we're, we're weak. But this life is not about us. Exactly. It's only to get us saved and to spread the gospel. There right you now. go. <laughs> and then we go. Yeah. And then we, that's when we get to really have the fun. Right. So just remember, it's coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> you our, are so our, right. our release from our chains. Oh, we are chained here wow. until the Lord comes. And he's coming soon. And you're yeah. right. You're right. So, with joy and the ministry, which I have received of the Lord Jesus. Now, look at this word received. It is G2983, okay? The word is lambano. Now, it means receive, but as the Lord gives us what he wants to give us, it is an active word. We are to reach up and take what the Lord has given us. We don't sit there and do this. Eh, whatever, eh. He has given us his gifts, his salvation, his deliverance, his healing, all that he has, he gives to us. So our response is to reach up and actively yeah. take what he gives. It is an action word. 
It is not a laid back word. So everything about God I'm, I'm noticing and learning is action as we go on our journey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's all action and it's beautiful. So remember that we receive, we take what the Lord God Almighty gives us, the Lord Jesus Christ, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So there it is, by grace through faith, okay? So we receive that, and then we testify, we speak it out, we shout it out, we show it. Some people love to say um, the, the, uh, the best way to uh, um, preach the gospel is without words. I understand that. I get it because our actions speak louder than words. But when you throw your words on top of there, the Holy Spirit words that come through you, it's a whole nada level. It's an HNL. It's a whole nada level. Because God says, speak, confess, tell them what I tell you. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's so fun and it's so exciting. The evangelist is coming out in me. I got to tell you. Okay. So that's the grace of God. Did you get that? We good on that one? Okay. I hope you guys are getting this so far. We're making great time. We just hit an hour. <laughs> I didn't even think we were going to go an hour today, but we did. Okay, here we go. Next scripture. So that was Acts 20, 24 this year. Okay, so now we're going to Leviticus 23. Five is grace. 23 is death. Wow, when we, we die to enter grace. Do you guys know that? Because through death we enter life. That's just the way the gospel puts it out. So here we go. So I'm 39. <laughs> so yes, so you're 39. And I am whatever I am. Okay, now I got the red bouncing ball because we're going to read this. Why are we reading this? Oh, I know why we're reading this. Okay. Leviticus 23. And it's also in others. We Now we're getting into the timing of Shavuot. Okay. And what Shavuot is. And why it's important. Okay. It is one of the seven feasts of God. <clears throat> it is one of the seven feasts of God. Now this right here. It was, I might read this whole thing. We'll see. But I, for, for the, in my opinion. Remember. My opinion. The best that I've seen ever describe the feasts of God is Dr. Beria. I just had his drawings, his paintings, all of those things, the, 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 the amount, the, the, uh, the volume of, a, of scriptures that come out of that guy is crazy. And so the, I got this from him actually because I'm going to show his picture in a second. Uh, not his picture, but a picture he drew. Because we need to understand a little bit about Shavuot. And what, what does it say? Um, okay, so this gives the timing of when Shavuot is, and I'm going to show you the calendar in a second, and this also shows how to count that 50 days, and where it lands, and it also shows the, uh, what is what needs to be sacrificed and offered, okay, and they go they go into that in a little bit, I have a picture, so I'm not going to read it, read it, but there's a picture, um, I'll read it, ye shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves, okay, tenth of two tenths deals, they shall be a fine flour, and they shall be baked with leaven. Now, this happens 50 days, or, or I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, we're going to say it like this. Seven complete Sabbaths, Sabbaths after the unleavened bread. Unleavened bread. So they had the unleavened bread. Now they're going to go into Shavuot, where they were going to have leavened bread. And those are the wave offering. It's a very important. Now, uh, you know there's two kinds of leaven, right? There's the, the leaven of the, you know, the enemy, which went to the, the Pharisees, Sadducees, all that. Don't have their leaven. But there's also the leaven of God, which is everything of God. It's a good thing. So that's what this is. So baking them with the, the leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. And you shall offer... Um, the bread with seven lambs without blemish and uh, in, in the first year and one young bullock, a bull, okay, and two rams. They shall be for a burnt offering unto the Lord and their, um, and their meat offering and their drink offerings, even an offering made by fire of sweet savory savor unto the Lord. Okay, so uh, there's a picture of all of those things, but all of those things are offered on Shavuot the first, uh, the, the feast of weeks and the feast of first fruits. So that's what this offering <clears throat> is. And I'm going to show you a calendar right now that will take you through how to count that. But I just want to give you a, a, an idea of what this is. They shall sacrifice one goat of the uh, goats for the sin offering and two lambs uh, of the first year of a sacrifice of peace offerings. So the lambs are for peace. And remember we talked about the the sheep, the lambs that were a peace offering, and the hidden elephant Tov was in there, and that showed us. Mm -hmm. So that that's this part of that. I mean, 
that scripture was prophetically speaking to Shavuot, mm -hmm. which is this scripture right here, okay, about all the offerings and we are the <coughs> lambs, okay, and then you have the ox uh, and all those things, okay. Um, and the priest shall wave them uh, at the bread of the first fruits and they, uh, a wave offering before the Lord. And What's the that two mean, wave? No, <laughs> a wave, a wave offering. Um, for detailed information on this, please go see <laughs> Dr. Barry Ah. Remember, we're Gentiles. I mean, like, learning. are they waving their it's, offering it, it, in the yes. air? It's a wave over the oh. altar. There's a wave offering and a burnt offering and a drink offering. All the things that they're showing right here, uh -huh. in different ways they are offering those unto the Lord. Okay, so I love when you ask me questions that I don't know. And, I, I, and I'm honest. I say, <laughs> hey, yeah, you know what? I don't know. Hard if you're putting uh, you're stopping. animals in the air. That's not what they're putting in the air. Listen. Just go read it and go watch Barry Ah. Sorry. No, no, don't be sorry. Stuff your stories in a sack. It's a whole process of what they're doing on Shavuot. That's the important thing. Okay. Oh, wave the bread. <laughs> Let me click. Over. Because I saw the lambs. Right. Uh, wave right. the lambs. And right. I was like, that's a part as part of the wave. Here, let me show you this. Here's the wheat. Here are the two leaven loaves. Here are is the goat for the sin offering and the two lambs for the peace offering. Here are the seven lambs for the burnt offering and the two rams for a burnt offering and the young bullock or the ox for the burnt offering. So those are the burnt offering, those are the wave offerings, and these are sacrificed for sin and for peace. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, that's as much as I know mm -hmm. on how they do that, why they do that. I, I, I'm just, other than that's one of God's seven feasts. Now, remember, the seven feasts that start with Passover, then Unleavened Bread, Shavuot, Pentecost, or Feast of New Wine, and then you have um, a Feast of Trumpets, the oil, and then you have a Day of Atonement and Tabernacles, right? Yes, okay. Then, th those are the seven feasts of God. God's feast that he shares with us and we will share with him for eternity. Right. Okay. Which matches with the menorah, right? Absolutely. I wish I would have going to put <laughs> and it. And so, ahead. like, in the middle of the is menorah is... Pentecost, uh, the Feast of Wine is in the middle. Here's why I'm saying this. Because people like to say that Shavuot and Pentecost or the Feast of New Wine is the same feast. It is not. Biblically speaking, you have to use this kind of calculation. So, here's Passover, okay? And then they had the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Let me get my little um, ball out. Passover was on April 23rd. Yes. <clears throat> so, Passover at April 22nd, Feast of Unleavened Bread started on oh. April 23rd. It's okay. And going through there, and, and, and remember, that's when uh, Jesus Christ went to the cross. Then he rose again three days later. He offered the first fruits there. And this is when, um, remember, uh, we talked about where Jesus Christ comes back and he meets the, all the disciples except for Thomas because mm -hmm. he wasn't there. And then he went eight days and then met with all the disciples and Thomas. And then in a few days over here, he met Peter and seven, uh, uh, there was Peter and six other apostles, seven apostles. He met, they were fishing, and he called them to the loaves. He goes, put your net on the other side, mm -hmm. and they did, and then they recognized, right. that's Jesus. Well, that's right there. Mm -hmm. Then it picks up, and it says, for 40 days, 40 more days, he showed himself to many, right? And Paul describes that phenomenally in Corinthians. Do you want to say something? Yes. Go ahead. Well, it's interesting that Thomas is not there because um, he represents Israel. Oh. Because he needed to see. Oh. To know. And then and one wow. week later. Wow. Thomas Seven years. Is with them. Wow. Give me that. Okay. In case, I hope you're picking up what she's putting down. Mm. In prophetic speak in the Bible. So um, seven speaks to a week. Like she just said, a week of a week of years is seven years. It's a, it's a, it's a, um, <laughs> a Shemitah cycle. Oh, man, my brain, ding dong, okay, my brain, a Shemitah cycle, seven years, it's, it's a prophetic seven years, right? So we're waiting for that prophetic seven years, so we go, and then bam, he comes back, and then Israel, go, mm -hmm. totally understand, I totally get it. He said, I won't believe unless I, I see the see, nails. Right. Nail pierced hands. Oh my goodness gracious sakes. And side. And what does Israel need to do? They will be moved to jealousy when we're gone, and they will go, oh. and then they will see, they will see whom they have pierced. And they will declare, blessed is he who comes in the name yes. of the Lord. Wow, Lori, thank you very much. I didn't see that, and now I do. Wow, okay. So that gets us here, and then for 40 more days, will get us right to Shavuot. And if you want to count it biblically, you go from Sabbath, seven complete Sabbaths. So that means you count, and you count one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
and the day after, or the Bible says, and the morrow, <laughs> which will be the next day, which gets us to the 15th day of the third month, which is Savan. And, and again, Dr. Barry does all these things on the, the 315 Club, <laughs> which is right there. There's a ton of 315, which all the different um, prophetic things that happened on 315. Okay, and so Shavuot falls on 315, this day right here. Now, that uh, Feast of Weeks, this whole thing is a two-week first fruits. It's a big, huge feast. And if I count seven complete Sabbaths from there, it gets us all the way to the Feast of New Wine, which is right here, Pentecost, which is uh, August 12th. The reason I want to say this, because you can't just combine feasts. You can't just say, oh, they're combined, and you just count 40 days. No, no, no. You have to go by the Bible, and the Bible says seven complete Sabbaths gets you there, seven complete Sabbaths gets you there, and from there, seven complete Sabbaths gets you to um, Feast of Trumpets. So it's the Pentecades, right? The 50s. Fitty, fitty, fitty. <laughs> These are the fitties. So this one is going to be the middle fitty. Okay? So um, one, two, three. Anyway, I don't want to confuse anybody, but right now let's focus on Shavuot. If we're still here, we, we got more than enough to talk about about the Feast of New Wine and Pentecost. But I'll show you why I think this is pretty cool. So Shavuot right here, this is where Jesus Christ ascends or taken up into heaven. Okay? And, and, and they all see him. So hopefully this is clear. This picture right here was given to us by Dr. Barry All. He drew these pictures. Go to his website, look at his Shavuot one. He'll again in massive detail on all that feast and what's going on. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're where were we today? We are on, oh, we're in the seventh day of Savan. So the seventh day of the third month, we're on the, uh, this is actually a Sabbath, believe it or not. If you're calculated on this kind of calendar with God's calendar, when you see the first sliver, we are actually, this today's a Sabbath. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to all of you. Okay, we're on a Sabbath. <laughs> I, I, just, I just remembered, it's right there. So we are right here in this week <clears throat> where we are going to see a lot of crazy, cool, uh, amazing things. Crazy cool. Crazy cool. Okay, so now that gets us, now that we know the timing of how to count seven Sabbaths and seven Sabbaths three times, 50, 50, 50, now we need to look at Luke 24. That's <laughs> 2024. Believe it or not, Luke 24 is when we're going to see right now. Now let's just read it. I don't want to get crazy. Make it my little red ball. Okay. Now, so, whew, this is Jesus Christ talking. Okay? It should have been in red. But this is Jesus Christ talking, starting at verse, verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. So Jesus is talking to uh, his disciples. Okay? So behold, I send the promise of my Father, which is the Holy Spirit, upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power, dunamis, the dunamis power of God from on high. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we know the story. Jesus tells his disciples, uh, I'm getting ready to go. Go tarry in the city, okay? And you wait for the power of the Holy Spirit. And in 50, it says this, um, and he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. So he blessed all that were following him right there, he blessed them. And it came to pass that while he was blessing them, he was parted, or he departed, departed from them, and was carried up into heaven. Totally makes me think of a Galilean wedding. Okay, I'm just saying. Because the bride in a Galilean wedding, she is picked up and carried off. So the bride in a Galilean wedding is picked up and carried off. So Jesus Christ was picked up and carried off, okay, into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, absolute great joy. And were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. So that's Luke 24. Again, focus on he was taken up into heaven. Right. Okay. Now, Luke wrote Luke, obviously, but Luke also wrote the book of Acts. So we're going to go to Acts 1, where Jesus Christ is also talking to them. This is the other part of the story. Now look at this. Verse 8. But you shall receive dunamis. The power of God <clears throat> after the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in both Jerusalem and all Judea and all Samaria and unto the uttermost, uh, uttermost parts of the earth. Utter. <laughs> the uttermost parts of the earth. So all over the globe. But first, what? You have to receive the power of God. The power of God comes upon you. He gives, you, uh, he gives us his dunamis power to do all the miraculous things that he needs us to do right here. Mm -hmm. That's 
Everything, everything. If you want to minister, you got to minister in the Holy Spirit. That's right. Right, okay. So, <clears throat> now, and when he had spoken these things, remember, this is part of the blessing that he was blessing them. We saw it in Luke, and this is an Acts, a carry-on. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld him, they were staring, locked on focus, laser focused. They were on Jesus Christ. As they beheld him, he... Well, I would be too. I would be, yes, I would <laughs> be. be like... Yeah. <laughs> what just happened? As they looked Where at him... Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. He was taken up. Literally, he was taken up. Just like a Galilean bride, he was taken up. In fact, he gave us the example that's going to happen because he's the bridegroom coming back for the bride. So he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Now, in the past, we did studies on the cloud. Okay, Old and New Testament, it is the literal Shekinah glory, the, the cloud, the, the, the power of God, uh, that you, tangible. You can see and sense the cloud appeared. And when that portal opens, you will see this cloud. When it says we will meet with him in the cloud, it's the cloud of the Shekinah glory of God. Mm -hmm. His presence, okay? So he was taken up and he was received up out of their sight, okay? And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, just like you said, they're like, oh, <laughs> they're staring. Look at this. They were staring towards heaven. As he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Yes, these are angels. And these angels say what? <laughs> Which also, uh, which also the angel said, Ye men of Galilee. Remember, the years are Galilean. So the Galilean wedding. He's given an example of a Galilean wedding. When he had the Last Supper, he literally explained pretty much a Galilean wedding by uh, telling them all the things to look for. Okay? So, men of Galilee, why are you standing gazing up into heaven like this? This same Jesus, this same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. So in like manner, in the same way and prototype that you are seeing right now on this day, which is the day of Shavuot, which is the day that he ascended, which is on Shavuot, okay? He was taken up before them. He is going to appear and come back in that same way. And what's he going to do? He's going to take us in the same exact way. Can I give a high five? So, now, am I given a day? I cannot give a day of the rapture. I can only say what the scripture says, in the same exact way that he went, he's going to come again and take us. Mm -hmm. And so this is, again, that picture of the taking. Mm -hmm. The picture of him going and coming back even. I mean, And it's happened on Shavuot. This happened on Shavuot. I, I, I am not going to say 100% guarantee on this day. No, no. But on this day right here, he was taken. He was taken to Shavuot. Can he return? Because the angel said, the same Jesus, in like manner, the same way he did, he's going to come back in the same way. So, uh, all I could say right now, guys, is, it, 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 yeah, woohoo! And can we get one of these, Billy? Yes, we can. Billy can shout. Okay. Oh, Billy, he was mentioned as a sin offering in that last scripture. I forgot. Billy, thank you for being a sin offering in the Old Testament. You're representing Jesus Christ in the New Testament, right? Because mm -hmm. everything represents him. Okay, I don't want to get off on that rabbit trail. <laughs> Do you get that? Shava, oh, he was taken and he's coming back in the same way. That makes sense? Whew. Guys, please go read for yourselves all those things. In fact, I, I, if you want a homework assignment, I, I don't normally like to give them. because, But, it, but, but in these homeworks, you're going to learn a lot. If you want to see things, uh, go look in all the books they have a 20th chapter and a 24th verse. And just kind of see what it says. See if there's any prophetic pictures from beginning to end in there, right? Also, if you want to do even more scriptures, do the second verse and uh, the second chapter and the 24th verse. Because the two dots, the colon in the middle, it could represent a zero, right? So 2024. That's all I'm saying. 2024. Just see, could God have a message for you guys? Go ahead and try that. See what happens. <laughs> Put it in the comments if you're going to go try. Okay. Um, anyway, believe it or not. What? We, what? We made it through. Right. <clears throat> now, yes, we went Old Testament, New Testament, Old Testament, New Testament, and it gave the picture, a single flow of everything that is taking place right now and, and what is going to be happening during Shavuot. Can I just say that? And personally, I am extremely excited. I'm chomping at the bit. I'm like, wow. Yeah, I'm doing that. Bing, bing, bing. The end is here. The end is here. And everyone's laughing at us. And yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Woo-hoo. Okay. Now, we do have something to talk about it's here. It's funny. All these cameras should just be phones. 
<laughs> well, cares. okay. There's a phone and there's an iPad and yeah, 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 yeah I got gotcha. you. <laughs> you are so funny. <clears throat> What's really cool about this Go ahead, interesting talk to me, talk thing to me. that you have <clears throat> is that the Lord has been showing me that He, uh, through through the Song of Songs, yeah, oh song song, right, um, through the course of that is the bride and the. And the groom. king. Yeah, the king. The, yes. And um, what's so cool is that it's almost as if I, I told Pete, I said, I feel like he he calls us to wake up, tells us that he's coming, and then he has this period of time that causes us to be longing for him. Oh, he yes. He wants us longing for our, wow. our coming king. Yes. He desires that, and it's actually in the Song of Songs. It's only eight chapters. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That would be a great, if you're going to do that, go read the Song of Psalms. We, believe it or not, we were going to teach on that this time, Yeah. and we didn't. Because <laughs> I, we, I, we had to go with the leading of the Holy Spirit. Because it is, again, with the Shulamite woman. And, well, that one's, yes. The Shulamite. That's the Shulamite. And then in, in First Kings is the Shunamite. Guys, we were, I was going crazy with that study. I mean, it's a really great study, but it wasn't for today. We, yeah. we might do it a different time if we're still here. Anyway, mm -hmm. thank you. That was, that's awesome. Yeah. So, so, go ahead. If you're longing for him, you're in the right place. Yes. yes. I am longing for Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Longing, head yes. over heels. Yes. Oh, I am desiring like no other. I am. So, um, we're going to finish this off by doing this. Um, here, plusnothing.com, go get your free gospel tracts that you can leave everywhere. It's just the story of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. literally in chronological order, the gospels, and it just tells everything about Jesus Christ and how to, through grace, by faith, how to receive him. Okay, so those are very easy to hand out. Um, oh, can I, one thing, when, okay, when I was at the racetrack, I, I got to say this, okay, we're at, at the racetrack again, okay, it's time to go. The, the race is over. We had to go return our headsets. And so we had, I've never, we've never done this. We've gotten out of, you know, NFL games and, and, and professional baseball games and all that. And the traffic is horrible. I've experienced nothing like I experienced at this NASCAR because half of that crowd camps out on those areas. And so tra traffic to get out is, is just, it's horrible. It took us, I don't know, two and a half, three hours, whatever. But when we were, we had to go to a shuttle, right? So we had to wait in line. So we come up. The, the, the tunnel and we get, oh, here's the line for the, the red shuttle. And I, I turn right around and I, to get in line and a voice behind me goes, hey, there's a line. And I look, because in front of me is a huge line, but I look behind me and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's about a mile long line. And so we had to go back to the end of the line. Good for us. It was moving at a good clip. But I, I, the line was massively long. Somewhere in the middle of our wait, I'm not kidding, I, we were making friends with the family ahead of us. They were actually from uh, Fresno, and part of them moved over to Oakland, and they had their kids, and we, it was awesome. And we just had some fun, right? We had some fun. And eventually, I was thinking, I was probably going to give them some of these. But what happened, because we were just, I, I lost my mind, I was uh, talking to my guy, and we were talking to them, and looking around, all the things that were going on. All of a sudden, I am not kidding, Right next to me and Micah appears a young lady. We found out later she's uh, 27, okay? But she just appeared. I mean, literally, because I know everyone around us. I turned away, and I turned back, and she's there. And so I go, oh, um, are, you, are you with these guys? I thought she was the girlfriend of, of one of the, the young guys, the son, right? And she goes, uh, no, I'm not with them. I said, so you're not with them? I go, are you with us? And she goes, yes. <laughs> and so in my mind, I knew she was trying to cut. I, just saying she didn't want to wait in the line. But I said, okay, you could, you could be a part of us. You're part of us now. And so she was there, and we started talking to her. She told us all kinds of things about herself. We were just asking questions. It was, it was actually very inspiring. So when we went, got to the buses, the family that I was like really, really, you know, talking with and all that, they went into a different bus, and so we couldn't go with them. But they let us three go to the other bus, right? So, yes, guess what? Because of all the things that she shared and what God was showing me, I, I noticed her tattoos and I noticed her hat. She had a really cool hat and it had the crown of thorns, something that looks like the crown of thorns on her head. And I go, what? And Micah reminded me, he, she go, he goes, um, you know, she, she looks like she has crown of thorns on her because we had separate seats. So I go, 
that's right, that's the green light for me to do it. So I went over where she was sitting and I said, hey, it looks like you have the crown of thorns on your head. And she goes, oh yeah, thanks. I go, it looks really cool. She goes, my friend designs this for companies. He, he's a designer for companies. He designs shirts and hats and all this stuff. I'm like, wow. I go, well, since it reminds me of the crown of thorns, I said, you know, Jesus Christ wore a crown of thorns. And she goes, oh, I go, can I, can I, can I give this to you? I go, and she goes, what is that? I go, it's just the story of Jesus Christ. It's the gospels and it talks about who Jesus is. And she goes, oh, yes. Yes, I would love it. I, she goes, and I, and I go, it's a very easy uh, wording. It's, it's a very easy version to understand. And she goes, <laughs> she goes, I was just watching on TikTok. They were talking about some versions that were easy to understand about the Bible. I go, well, this is one of them. And, and I go, and Jesus loves you, and you're amazing in him, and all this stuff. And so she was talking about she wanted to read the book of John or something. Anyway, I just ministered what I could to her. And then we were on our way and we left. And she was so excited that she got that. And so, yes, it was just a confirmation to me that she, I'm, not saying she's not a, I'm not saying she's an angel because she's human. I'm sure she's human. But it was funny that she just appeared out of nowhere. That was funny. And so that was a clue to me that God said, hey, you might want to talk to her. <laughs> right? Okay. So in all that, go get your pluslesson.com. Get your, get your all your tracks. Give them out. Whatever, however God wants you to just. How you never wants. know when we're entertaining angels. You never know. And you never know when they're entertaining us. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You are correct. So I tried to be obedient, and there we go. Yeah. Now, Jesus, is Jesus Christ is coming. Jesus Christ is coming. Look at this. A white buffalo calf was born in Yellowstone. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Didn't this happen last year? But, not, but, but yes and no. I'll tell you why. Yes and no. Yes, it did happen. But he was, I think, pure white, like pink nose and all of that, okay? This guy just so happened to fulfill the Lakota tribe, the Indian tribe, Lakota tribe prophecy that is roughly about 2,000 years old. I didn't know that. I learned that. And here's what it says. Okay. The calf has white fur a black nose, black eyes, and black hooves. According, now this says legend, according to the 2,000 year old prophecy um, from the white buffalo calf woman, if you don't know, go look it up. It, 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 you can find out what happened all those years ago. Um, the white buffalo calf woman appeared to the tribe during bad times and presented a bowl pipe and a bundle and a bundle to a tribe member. A tribal member. Now, I'll, I'll get to the second. She taught them how to pray. And she said that the pipe could be used to bring, bring buffalo to the area as for food. As she left, she turned into a white buffalo calf, as the legend says. Okay? But look at this. Someday, this is part of the quote that she said, and someday when the times are hard again, the woman said before she left, I shall return and stand upon the earth as a white buffalo calf, black nose, black eyes, and black hooves. The other buffalo calf was, I want to say, almost all white, and I believe a pink nose, if I remember correctly. This one has all the specifications of that 2,000-year-old prophecy by that Indian tribe, the Lakota tribe. Mm -hmm. I now get. I understand. That's cool. Go ahead. Right. And you know that the Lord went around the earth. And oh yeah. Presented himself and. Absolutely, he showed himself to every culture and every culture in their DNA, in their in their writings, in their all that. It has biblical stories throughout the flood, the creation, everything. Mm -hmm. This one just so happens to talk about the return. Now we know because we're in Christ that and through scriptures that we are waiting for Jesus Christ, the almighty God. Now, he is pure white, Jesus Christ is. <laughs> hint, hint. Okay, so that talks to that. Fire in his eyes. With fire in his eyes. Now look at what, uh, the, this, is, this is from the news. Now this chief, the current chief, uh, Chief Arvel Looking Horse, okay, is the spiritual leader of the Lakota, Dakota, and Nakota Oyat, Oyate? I'm sorry if I can't pronounce it right. He is also the 19th keeper of the white buffalo calf woman pipe and bundle. So he, it was passed down, okay? And he says for the Lakota, the birth of a white buffalo calf with a black nose and eyes and hooves is akin to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now that's their tribal leader. That's their chief. That's current. He's saying it is akin or likened to the return of Jesus Christ. So us who are in Christ that see that, we go... 
<laughs> because just one more, just one more sign that Jesus Christ is giving us to say, look guys, you better be awake, alert, and watching, patiently enduring and Amen. actively waiting for my yes, return. Yes. Because I'm announcing it everywhere. And if you have eyes to see and ears to hear, you're going to know. Right? You're going to know. That's right. Whew. So that's you, all what we have. <laughs> Do you want to mention any um, other news things or anything like that? I mean, because there's so much going on. Yeah. I mean, there's we got things in the well, sun, animals, moon, and stars. And, oh, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. Camels got loose in Cedar Point, <laughs> I, Ohio. Now, I have a question for Ohio. Right. Why do you guys always lose your animals? Like, it was a couple of years ago that uh, uh, like Wait, a, man, a man-made zoo... Uh, Bears and lions and tigers were out on the oh highway my. or something like that. <laughs> they all escaped, but and, it's in Ohio. And I think that the Tiger King lived in Ohio. For I guess. a while? I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know. If you remember who that but guy anyway, is. anyway, you know. But Ohio has something with animals. Yeah. It's funny. <laughs> That's no knock on Ohio, but keep your animals contained. Anyway. <laughs> Ohio. <laughs> oh, hi. Oh, yes. Okay. I, I don't know where we're going. <laughs> I'm at a loopy. Just being goofy. But we are done with all yeah. the info except for the most we important would, part. Go ahead. We would just want to end on a happy note. Here's a happy note. <laughs> Love. Love. The giving of yourself to others at your own expense. Now, I just noticed this. I should have noticed this years and years ago. But this is John 3.16. Now, we know um, in Hebrew, 16 is love. And 3 is Almighty God. Elohim. Almighty God. The 3 in 1, right? So... This, what 316 in John says, for God so loved the world that he, he gave his only begotten son himself, that whoever, whoever believes, has faith in him, believes in him, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Right? So that's exactly what we talked about in the scriptures today. But 316 is God's love. He gave it to us for free. All we got to do is Take it, Lambano. Take it. Receive it. Have faith. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what we do. Okay. Can you read this, please? Number nine. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Absolutely. And confess, right? So the with your mouth. Remember we talked about, God gives us words, we speak words, we confess. Yes, you can do it without words, but it's even more with words. That's all I'm saying. Do it either way. But confess, 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 confess. Please go read the gospel right here. And uh, in, in 1 Corinthians 15, the whole thing is just amazing. The whole thing is amazing. And of course, Ephesians, by grace through faith, we already talked about that. It is by grace through faith, not of our works. Because we can't boast. It is all about God and his unmerited favor, his free gift. And we receive it. And we just wrote Rome, read Romans. Right? Praise God. Woo! I think we did it. I think we made it. I think we did it. We did it. You want, can you say this this time? Go ahead. The bridegroom is returning for his bride. Look up. Be ready. We, we gone. gone. Ladies and gentlemen, we are gone. Please prepare yourselves. Be ready. Be yeah. kind. Rewind. Right? Yeah. Grab somebody love on them. What else you want to say? You're kissy today. I'm very kissy today. I love my bride. I love my wife. And yes, I love to kiss her. She's beautiful. She's great. She's amazing. She's my best friend. Oh, and we are getting through this together in Christ. We are one. We have one another. And you guys are the one another's. We encourage one another, all of you. We love each and every one of you guys. We can I just say we appreciate you, if you know it or not? Yes, All yes. of you guys. We truly appreciate you guys. Yes. You are amazing. Yep. Okay? Yeah. So I think that's all we got. Be blessed and have a great week. Yes. Adios. See you soon. Adios. <laughs>